Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create AI entities in the editor. Enter the editor, click on the entity in the game component, let's create an entity first, name it AI. Click on the AI entity, and in the property view on the right. Click AI, property to switch to the AI property page. We can see the AI properties of the entity. If you want to achieve the effect that AI entities, can automatically walk, or attack player in game. You need to check the, enable entity AI, property, and then configure the new properties. If you want to limit how far AI entities can move in the scene, enable the limit moving range property. You can set the movement radius property of AI entities, so that AI entities can only move within the set radius of a sphere centered at the spawn point. When the AI entity moves out of range, you can also set its action in the, when it is outside the range property to let the entity, return back to the spawn point, return back to a random location within the range. If you want to give AI entities the ability to attack, it is necessary to check the can attack enemies property in the battle mode and enable the battle property of the AI entity. We can set in the attack mode property whether the AI entity carries out automatic attack or passive attack. If we choose automatic attack, then the AI entity will actively search for enemies within the range to attack. If we choose passive attack, then the AI entity will only counterattack after being attacked by the enemy. The target type property is used to set what type of targets the AI entity can attack. If we choose only attack players, the AI entity will only attack player entities and will not attack NPC entities. If we choose can attack players and NPC, then AI entities will indiscriminately attack entities within the attack range. The view distance property is used to set how far the AI entity can see an enemy. For example, we set the view distance of the AI entity to 10. If the distance between the AI entity and the enemy is less than 10, the AI entity will detect the enemy. If the distance between the AI entity and the enemy is greater than 10, the AI entity will not detect the enemy. As for the view angle property, it determines the range of enemies that AI entities can see. For example, if we set the view angle of the AI entity to 180, then enemies within a 180 degree sector in front of the entity will be detected. Enemies behind AI entities will not be detected. Note that AI entities have no attack power, which requires us to configure AI entities with offensive skills. Click the add button to the right of the attack skills property to add a skill setting. There are three properties in the skill settings that can be adjusted. Only when the distance between the enemy and the AI entity is less than the value of skill casting range property can the skill be costed. The priority level property means that when an AI entity has multiple skills, the skills will be costed in descending order according to the value of this property. Select skill allows you to select specific skills. If you want AI entities to patrol in the game, set patrol method to patrol randomly. And set the patrol range of AI entities in the patrol radius property. If you want to make the behavior of AI entities more complicated, you can also set AI entities to zone out during patrol. In the zone out probability property, set the AI entities zone out chance when patrolling. Adjust the duration of zone out status in the zone out time property. There are two movement rules for AI entities, one is the encountering click property, and the other is the intelligent search property. After checking the detect cliffs property, the AI entity will stop and automatically avoid when it encounters a cliff. If the detect cliffs property is not checked, the AI entity may keep moving along the current path, eventually causing the entity to fall off the cliff. The definition of cliff height property means that when the terrain in front of the AI entity is lower than the current terrain, and the difference is greater than the value of this property, it will be recognized as a cliff by the AI entity. 
When the scene where the AI entity is applied is complex terrain, we need to enable the intelligent search function of the AI entity. For example, we place AI entities in a map with uneven terrain and many obstacle parts. When intelligent search is enabled, AI entities will more likely move along the optimal path. With the intelligent search function disabled, the movement of AI entities will become messy due to the uneven terrain. Next, let's make an AI entity that can automatically patrol, bypass obstacles and actively attack the player. In the Entities component, click to add a monster entity. In its AI property page, check the property can attack enemies, and set the attack mode to automatic attack. The target type is set to only attack players, the view distance is set to 10, and the view angle is set to 270. Add two skill setting items, and place our prepared skills to AI entities. Prioritize the casting of breath skills in the priority level. Then set the patrol method to patrol randomly, and set the patrol radius to 15. Finally, check the detect cliffs properties and enable intelligent search. An AI entity that can automatically patrol and attack the player is created. Place the entity into the prepared scene, let's go to run mode to check the effect. The basic properties of AI pets are similar to those of AI entities. The main difference is that AI pets have a pet following distance property. Following distance with an attack target means that, when a pet attacks an enemy, if the distance between the pet and the owner exceeds the value, the pet will no longer pursue the enemy. Following distance without an attack target, sets the distance at which the pet follows the owner. After we set the AI pet properties, we need to generate the pet through the event editor. In the edit events page of the player entity make adjustments. Select the when the entity enters the game node, and edit create pet action node. Add the AI pet we just created to the action node. As for the logic editing, we will explain in the subsequent videos. Next, we can run the project to have a look at our AI pet. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.